In 1944, Alcolu, South Carolina, involving George Stinney, a 14-year-old boy accused of murdering two girls, Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames. George and his older brother John were arrested, but while John was later released, George remained in custody isolated from his parents until after his trial and conviction. Deputy H.S. Newman, the arresting officer, claimed George confessed and revealed the location of a piece of iron about 15 inches long, supposedly used in the crime and hidden in a ditch near a bicycle. Following George's arrest, his father lost his job, and the Stinney family had to leave their home abruptly due to safety concerns. George's parents never had the chance to see him before the trial. Throughout his 81-day confinement and trial, he received no support, held at a jail in Columbia, 50 miles away from Alcalou, due to the looming threat of lynching. George underwent questioning in isolation without the presence of his parents or legal representation, highlighting the lack of consistent legal rights observed at the time, as the Sixth Amendment guaranteed legal counsel only later, in 1963. In 1944, George, measuring 5 feet 1 inch and weighing 90-95 pounds, lived in a modest dwelling in Alcolu with his family. The town's segregated neighborhoods mirrored the typical southern setup of that era, with limited interaction between white and black communities. The bodies of Betty June and Mary Emma were discovered in a ditch on the African-American side of Alkaloo on March 23, 1944. George's father participated in the search. The girls had sustained severe injuries, and the medical examiner determined blunt force trauma caused by a round-headed instrument, possibly a hammer. During the trial in April 1944, George's court-appointed counsel, Charles Plowden, did not effectively challenge the evidence. George was tried before an all-white jury, and the trial lasted only two and a half hours. The jury found him guilty in less than ten minutes, and he was sentenced to death by electrocution. Despite pleas for clemency, George was executed on June 16, 1944. His family was allowed to see him once after the trial, and, under the threat of lynching, not at any other time. In 2014, Judge Carmen Mullen vacated George's conviction, citing an unfair trial, likely coerced confession and the cruel nature of executing a 14-year-old. Although the judge didn't declare George innocent, she emphasized the lack of justice in his case. Following George's exoneration, suspicions arose about George Washington Burke Jr., a wealthy white businessman's son, as a possible suspect. George Burke Jr. died a few years after the murders and allegations suggest he may have framed George Stinney. However, these claims remain unproven, underscoring the complexity and injustices surrounding George Stinney's tragic case.